Hello and welcome to another edition of Gone Again. In this video, I want to talk to you about how the simple cargo trailer can become a very effective, low-cost bug-out trailer. But first, let's talk about what it is to bug out and why you might need to think about that. Well, the term bug out, that's an old term. Where's Rick? Oh, he bugged out already. But why do we have to think about that? I don't want to go into this too deep. I think you all know what I'm talking about. Uh, you might have to bug out of your neighborhood when things get too unsafe to be there any longer. Look what happens when there's the threat of something coming and within like this, this last thing that happened last year where everything disappeared, everything necessary disappeared off the store shelves in three days. And I'm talking about canned chili, toilet paper, water, uh, all kinds of canned meats, everything disappeared, gone. Well, what would happen if the federal government collapsed and welfare checks didn't go out? Now, this is nothing against people on welfare directly, but what happens when people stop getting their money every month that they're counting on? Chaos. Absolute chaos. It happened in Argentina already a few years ago. Three days. Everything was cleared out. People were searching for food, and uh, things got really bad in a hurry. So this same thing could happen here. But the thing is that I do believe that we could find ourselves in a bug out situation where our neighborhoods become too dangerous to remain and we might have to head for the hills. In that case, I've got the perfect little trailer to do it in here and it didn't cost me an arm and a leg and you can do yours even cheaper. And that's what this video is about. So let's get off the heavy stuff and get into the fun stuff and start looking at this trailer. First of all, you got to take the trailer and the tow vehicle both into consideration. They make one total package. The nice thing about these cargo trailers is that they're lightweight and they're easy to tow. So your tow vehicle can be just a two-wheel drive. We towed this little trailer for a couple of years with just a Mazda CX-9 front-wheel drive. And we did get into some trouble just on dirt roads, steep inclines where the uh, front wheels would start to slip because you shouldn't tow with a front wheel drive. Otherwise, it, power wise, it was, it was okay. So whether you have like a Ford Explorer or a, you know, a Jeep Cherokee or um, a two wheel drive pickup truck even, uh, you're gonna be able to tow these little trailers just fine. And for the sake of this video, I'm talking about small cargo trailers starting with the five by eight the 6x10 and the 6x12 and no larger and there's a reason for that. The six foot wide cargo trailer goes through the down the skinny roads and through the brush a lot more easily. Now I know that the I know that the wheels and the fenders, the tires and the fenders stick out the same as a seven, but those tires and fenders go through the brush pretty easily, whereas a seven foot wide one with the extra height, you're getting into branches and things. So I'm talking about six foot wide to go down the skinny roads. Now I'm okay with a six foot high trailer because I'm just under six feet. So I got plenty of headroom inside. Also, I can sleep across the back because of my, my height, but there's some other issues we'll talk about there. So the thing is you can spend a lot of money on a off-road trailer or a bug out trailer. You can spend tens of thousands of dollars but this cargo trailer, we've hauled down some of the roughest of roads, some of the tightest roads, turned around in some of the tightest places. That's why we choose a single axle trailer as it turns around in tight places. And this is why we'll stick with our little six by 10 cargo trailer with our four wheel drive Yukon. Because on these rows like this, we can turn around. We can turn around.
Now, I'm not calling this an overlander trailer because that's, that's a whole nother thing where the guys purposely go into some really rough terrain. But this will get you into places where you can be all by yourself and hidden. Now, this is a travel trailer for us. So is white hidden? Well, maybe if we were in the Arctic, I would choose a different color. And uh, we'll discuss camouflage in a later video. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother subject. But there, but there are some things that I could tell you about camouflage. But back to the subject of height. The uh, trailer this size, uh, six feet high, works fine for me. A five by eight, that can work fine for some people. But if you're stuck inside during a prolonged rainy period, it's nice to be able to stand up. And you can get these in various heights. If you order them new, you can special, special order any height you want. My daughter has one inside that, that's six foot four inches inside. It's pretty nice. Of course, the higher they are, the taller they are, the poorer they are on gas mileage because of the wind resistance. One of the things that makes the cargo trailer special is the way it's constructed. Ours happens to be all aluminum, aluminum frame and everything, but the steel ones are, are just as strong, maybe stronger, who knows, I don't know. Ours is made out of pretty robust stuff, but they're all welded. So when you take them down those crooked roads and those bouncy roads, they hold together, they don't come apart. Especially back here in the aft frame. This is massive back here, this, this rectangle here. So it stops all the, any um, torquing back here. Makes it really strong. Let's just take a peek inside here. Now we've owned this trailer for years. I don't know how good the light's gonna be. Oh, not bad. It's pretty simple. If those of you that have watched my videos know what's in here. There's two pipe bursts across the back. We use pipe bursts because they're extremely comfortable and uh, warm and cozy. Very nice. Uh, anyways, then you'll see two stools here. And the two stools, let me show you what they're about. Two stools go along with a very simple folding table. And uh, one stool there and another stool on the other side here. And Linda and I can sit in here and eat. How much do you need in here? You don't have to build in cots. You can put a cot along the side. Instead of cots across the back, you could have cot coming up coming up the side here. It doesn't have to be installed. It can be a cot that you can buy. You can buy the disco cot, which is a bunk bed style where you sleep one above the other. You don't have to build anything. You can put that in there. See the white folding table there? That works very well in here if we didn't have that fold down table. That's a two foot by four foot one. And we use that for years and we still use it outside. So it works quite well. Of course, the blue thing there, that's uh, one of those uh, pop-up toilet tents or shower tents. We actually shower inside by hanging a shower curtain off of this hula hoop. And there's a hole in the floor. Well, it's got a plug in it. And that's a, that is a drain for a collapsible dog bath that we use in here. And we put a drain in the middle of the collapsible dog bath and it goes down through the floor there. I don't care if it dumps out on the ground. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't matter. Um, there's a video that we did on building the pipe bursts. There's a video we did on making the collapsible shower. I'll put links to all those below. But what I'm saying here is that you don't have to build hardly anything in. You do need to do a little work, but you can get by with just putting things in here. Hey, the secret to a comfortable cot is that it does not, the canvas does not attach to a bar at the head and the foot. It needs to be free slung from one end to the other. And they do make cots like that, like the roll cot and the disco bed or the disco cot, disco cot. Okay, what do you need in a, in a cargo trailer to fix it up? You can buy these things really cheap used and they may be beat up on the inside. So you might have to replace a piece of plywood or two, something like that. Get out the paintbrush and the paint can and start painting if you want. However, they, they are much nicer if you insulate them with just rigid foam insulation. 
and it doesn't take long, you can take off that interior paneling and insulate it and put the paneling back up on the inside in one day. It's not a big deal. However, you're going to need ventilation. That's important. We installed two simple uh, small windows. We used the size window because we didn't have to cut the vertical framing to install them. That was one consideration. We put one of those on either side. The windows themselves were not inexpensive. I'm pretty sure they run about a hundred bucks a piece. The other thing we installed was this overhead vent. That's really super important. Those are cheap. They're like 35 bucks. So you got windows, you got ventilation, you've got insulation. Now you need some heat because this is really uncomfortable when it's cold to be camping. Uh, that's another thing about bugging out in a tent. Not for me. <laughs> I need something a little more cozy than that. Um, we installed this um, New Way propane vented stove. And propane is wonderful. We really like it. For bugging out, that might not be the answer. You might want a wood stove. New Way makes this exact same model in a wood burning stove. And they are cheap. If you wanted to switch between propane and wood burning, it would just be a matter of just unfastening the, what's ever bolting it down and swapping them out. You could swap back and forth if you wanted to, or just keep the wood burner. Of course, another thing that makes life enjoyable and pleasant is a refrigerator, even if you just need some place to keep that squirrel meat. So a 12 volt compressor refrigerator to me is a must. And the price, is, price has come down so far on these that, uh, that they are affordable. Yeah, it might take you a little time to save up the money to buy one, but what a difference it makes over an ice chest or no refrigeration at all. Because in a bug out situation, you're not gonna get ice. Now, before you guys make comments about the refrigerator being installed right next to the stove, it's not installed, it's a portable refrigerator, it moves. So you might wanna put solar on the roof to run that refrigerator. And uh, solar has come down so far in price that it's, it's cheap. It's, it can be had for less than a dollar a watt. Now we've got 200 watts on the roof and it does, ours does go down to a controller and then to a regular deep cycle battery. Uh, there's another way of doing that, of course, is to go down to a solar charger. From the solar panel down to a solar charger, it has its own controller inside. So you wouldn't need to install a controller, a separate controller inside your, inside your trailer. It can go just from the solar panel directly down to your solar charger. Of course, you can do that without installing a panel. You can have a portable panel too. So the things that Linda and I have done in this trailer, which is still very simple, simple is best. There's less to go wrong. But the things that we've done in here, we've done over the years. We started out with cots on the floor, just store-bought cots. And we slowly made improvements after that. You can do the same. Now these trailers can be purchased, used very, very inexpensively and even brand new. They're not that expensive, although yeah, more, but even a used one can be purchased uh, off of Craigslist or something like that. And yeah, it's going to be beat up a little bit, but for a bug out trailer, so what? So in this situation, yeah, you've got a great place to sleep. You can cook in there, you can eat in there, you can hang out in there when the weather is inclement. You can stand up and move around a bit. Uh, you'll notice that there's no real comfortable seating, but there is. We sit in the front seats in the evening time, watch the sun goes da going down. We have panoramic view. The comfortable seating is in your bug out vehicle. Don't forget that's part of the package. You've probably already seen this. We just added this uh, this past year, and it's just a simple little uh, kitchen we made in the back. Before that, we were just cooking on the bumper. <laughs> Put the stove right on the bumper and cooking. This just made life a little easier, but it also makes it so we can stay gone longer. Speaking of which, Linda and I have found that we can stay gone for an indefinite amount of time. We live mostly outdoors, sleep and cook indoors, cook outdoors, doesn't matter. Sit in the car when it's raining and read a book or something, listen to the radio. But whatever, this has been a very comfortable outfit for us. And in a bug out situation, you can stay gone for a long time. 
it may be a long time before you can go back home if you even have a home you can go back to in the situation that you know what I'm talking about. Camper, bug out trailer, call it what you want. It works great. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to give you food for thought just to show you that you don't have to spend big bucks to get out on the road and enjoy it or to get out on the road if you have to. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around.